It is absolutely absurd how many people think that getting a Google Data Analytics cert will guarantee you a job. I will become very old in the hills of California somewhere saying this exact same thing. Getting a certificate will not guarantee you a job in data analytics. If that were the case, the millions of people who have gotten the cert would be data analysts by now. But the reality is this is a very competitive field and you have to put in the work to actually break in. By the end of this video, I will explain exactly what I would do to become a data analyst in 2024 if I had to start over from scratch. This industry is changing rapidly. In fact, some of the tools that I use while getting into this industry aren't even used anymore. And I'm sure the tools that are used today may not be used tomorrow. So the one thing you have to learn from this video is you need to have a learner's mindset. This means no matter what the tools are, you need to be willing to learn and put in the work outside of the office to stay ahead and stay up to date on tools and technologies. If you're new here, my name's Rohan and I cover all things data analytics on this channel. I've been in data for about three years now. I've worked in data analytics, I've worked in product analytics, I've worked in business intelligence. I've pretty much been in almost every role. And I can tell you firsthand, you're making the right choice by going into data, especially now that data is the new gold. If this is the first video you're watching on how to become a data analyst, well, you're in luck because this is probably gonna be your last. But if this is not your first video, you are also in luck because this is hopefully gonna be the last video you watch on how to become a data analyst. I'm very confident if you follow the steps I'm about to provide here, you will become a great data analyst in the next couple months. If you're interested, down below I've included a list of free resources that I would use to become a data analyst if I had to start over from scratch. First step to landing your first job as a data analyst is to signal to employers. What do I mean by this? This could mean getting experience in the field. This could mean getting a degree such as a master's or bachelor's, or this could simply mean getting a cert. And if you are going to go the cert route, I would recommend one of two certs, the Google Data Analyst cert or the IBM cert, simply because they have brand recognition. And it's much easier to convince employers that these hold merit because literally the biggest tech companies in the world are behind this cert. In fact, Google itself has said it will actually take the cert instead of a bachelor's degree because that's how much confidence they have in it. That being said, as I mentioned earlier on in this video, getting one of these signals does not make you a great data analyst. All this will do is get your foot in the door to interview. After you figure out what type of signal you wanna to give to employers, the next step is to actually learn the technical skills. But you've been lied to. The technical skills are not just SQL, Python, or R. There's one skill that most people leave out while trying to become a data analyst, and that's statistics. Statistics is arguably the most important technical skill you'll have to learn while being a data analyst. In fact, I would spend the first few weeks to a month just hammering down the fundamentals of statistics. Think about it this way. This is an analogy I love to give students. When you look at a house, there are three components. There's the plan, there's the bricks, and then there's the tools. In our analogy, the tools are the languages, such so as SQL, Python, or R. The bricks are the data. And then the plan to build the house is the statistics. It's what method you're actually gonna use. People underestimate. When you think of a data analyst, you're doing data analytics. For the analytics portion, you need to use statistical analysis to actually form a base. One out of those three things, there is no data analytics and there is no house. So make sure you really master the fundamentals of statistics. Some concepts I'd really hammer down on are probability, experimentation, central tendency and distribution of data, hypothesis testing, and regression. There are tons of courses for free on YouTube that you could take. And there are also a bunch of courses you can audit for free on Coursera. I highly recommend this course, Intro to Statistics by Stanford on Coursera. There are tons of reputable universities and you can find some great resources out there for absolutely free. I also highly recommend this one book that one of my mentors told me called Practical Statistics for Data Scientists. I cannot tell you how many times I've actually used this on the job myself and how many people around me have used this book. This is truly the holy grail of data science and data analytics. So after you spend the first few weeks or months learning statistics, you need to learn Excel or Google Sheets. In industry, you're typically gonna use Google Sheets more than Excel, but either one will do as they're very similar. I'm gonna be quite honest here, Excel is probably the tool I use the least in my job. It simply just doesn't do that well with big data. You normally use it for very smaller scale analysis. You'll pull a small sample of data through SQL and you'll use Excel to actually analyze that small set of data. The functionality is just not as robust as something like Python or R as well. Some functions I would learn in Excel are pivot tables, B lookups, if else, and even just simple visualizations because some people prefer dashboards in Excel or Google Sheets. Again, for this, there's some great resources on YouTube I can highly recommend, Coursera, 
and tons of websites out there. I wouldn't spend any money on courses for this particular skill set because it's so ubiquitous in terms of resources online. So after you learn Excel, the next step is to learn SQL. And this is truly the bread and butter of data analysis in my opinion. In fact, I would bet over 90% of jobs in data analysis will require this one skill. In every single interview I've had for data analysis, there has been a SQL question in the technical interview. These typically go like live coding interviews. Look, you don't have to be an expert at SQL, but you should be proficient enough to answer these basic interview questions. And I highly recommend leveraging a website like LeetCode or HackerRank to practice these technical questions. The best way to learn SQL, the best website that I would recommend is this website called w3schools.com. This is what I learned. This is what one of my professors used to learn. And I truly think this is the best website to really just refer to SQL syntax for data analysis. Another website I highly recommend my students use is this website called DataCamp. I'm not sponsored or affiliated anyway. But I can tell you firsthand, this is one of the best resources out there in 2024. This website literally has the data loaded in and it has projects that literally walk you through. So in addition to videos teaching you what these functions and these languages do, you can also practice it in real time with data already loaded into it. So after you spend a few weeks learning SQL, just learning the basics, you need to move on to a data visualization tool. The one thing people get tripped up on, they always ask me, hey, should I learn Tableau or Power BI? My answer is learn the science behind storytelling with data. Data visualization is a science. It's an art. It's not subjective. You can't just throw on and slap on a bunch of data and reports and call it a day. And this is one of the biggest mistakes I see new analysts do. What separates a great analyst from a bad analyst is their ability to communicate with data. There's this great book I highly recommend people read called Storytelling with Data, and it goes over some of the fundamentals of this. Once you learn one of these visualization softwares, it's very easy to transition and learn another one. From my experience in industry, the most ubiquitous language is Tableau followed by Power BI, followed by Looker. But most companies use their own proprietary type of data visualization tool or business intelligence tool. So it really depends what company you're at. But at the end of the day, if you learn one of them, it's very easy to pick up another one. I personally started off learning on Looker and I think Looker is the future of data visualization but it's simply not there yet. Most companies are in Tableau or Power BI. So I highly recommend you, if I was studying 2024, I'd maybe start off with Tableau and I'd slowly start introducing new languages such as Looker in my learning routine. Again, YouTube has some tons of great resources on how to learn Tableau. Coursera has some, and I think DataCamp is now offering some basic Tableau or business intelligence classes. Tableau also has a really robust community, so it's very easy to upload your portfolio online once, once you finish some visualizations in this tool. Okay, so now that you got the visualization out of the way, you got SQL out of the way, and you got Excel out of the way, what do you learn next? This is where people get tripped up on. Should you learn Python or R? Both are great for data analysis. Python tends to be a bit more general, versatile, and used for general programming versus R is particularly for academia and statistics. So you really can't go wrong learning either. I first started learning off with R. I think a lot of people get turned away from data analysis and data science because they get very afraid of programming. And I was like this too. I didn't do very well in my programming classes. And I thought data analysis wasn't for me when I learned you had to use R or Python. But as I mentioned earlier, these are just tools to get the job done. A great data analyst doesn't have to be the best at Python. You don't have to come up with these extensive machine learning algorithms to be a really good data analyst. You just have to learn how to use the tools well and where to apply the tools. So please don't discourage you from becoming a data analyst. It's not easy to pick up these tools, but I can tell you on the job, you don't have to have anything memorized. You can start Googling syntax if you don't understand something, but you need to just understand how to use them and where to use them. If I were you and I was just getting started, due to the versatility of Python, and if you ever want to transition to data engineering or data science, Python has more libraries and it's more widely used than R is. R is great for data analysis though. It truly is a personal choice. Now that you have a plan for the next two to three months, how do you actually showcase to employers? It's not enough to just know these tools. You actually have to show them that you know these tools. Everyone will list these tools on the resume, but how many people show off the projects they have with these tools? Not a lot. That's why I recommend all of my students have a project section, especially if you don't have any data analysis experience previously. And while picking these projects, it's very important to choose the right data set. Some data sets that I recommend are choose an industry that you're actually passionate about, such as maybe real estate, finance, health, beauty. It really doesn't matter. Go on a website such as Kaggle or Google Dataset and choose data sets you're interested in. It's much easier to talk about an interview when you actually know the domain and the domain knowledge of an industry you wanna break into. And this can be done by using data in that specific domain. So when I was trying to go into a financial firm, I had a project done with financial data. I used Yahoo Finance data with stock prices and I really learned the basics of financial data. And this helped me talk about my interview and they were very impressed that I already had experience in this. So this will give you an advantage over other applicants applying to that same role. So the next thing, where do you actually put these projects to display them? 
go to github.com and start uploading all of your projects onto GitHub. I also recommend people to have a personal website. You wanna display what your goal is, what your experience is, and all your past work. Tableau, as I mentioned earlier, is Tableau Public, where you can literally upload your Tableau dashboard along with the data you've used, and people can look through these. Displaying and showcasing your work is just as important as doing the work in the first place. So please do not neglect projects. Projects also offer a great way to network with other classmates that you have or other people who are trying to break into the field. You both can work together and you both can learn together. The last thing I would do in 2024 is network. Network is so important, not only to get referrals for the job, but also just to understand how a company is. What do they use data for? What projects will you be working on? Because at the end of the day, data analysis is so new. Data analyst at one company may use different projects than a data analyst at another company. For example, at Facebook, data scientists actually do data analysis. And I know some data analysts just strictly do Excel. So it really depends on what you want in a company culture, what you want to learn, what projects you want to work on. And the only way to really learn this is by networking and talking to people in the field. So I recommend getting on LinkedIn, finding alumni at the college you went to, and just, and if you didn't go to college, finding people who work at the dream companies you want to work in and just send them a cold message. Say, hey, uh, can we chat for 10, 20 minutes, have a script ready, have an agenda ready, and just talk. Make it organic, make it a relationship. Don't ask for a referral during this call. And eventually if a role ever does come up at their company, you'll be the first in mind. You've shown an interest, you showed that you're looking for a job, and you've showed that you are actually working towards your goal by doing these projects. If you need help networking, I highly recommend joining a community. I actually have a Discord with over 900 people in data analysis. So if you're interested in finding people in the field already, looking to get in the field or just work on projects, highly recommend joining my Discord down below. If you got any value of this video, please leave a like and leave a comment down below what you liked or what your plan is to become a data analyst. I'm curious to see what industries you wanna break into. I really enjoy making this content and helping many of you out. So if you could, please support the channel and subscribe. That will mean a lot. I wish you the best of luck in your journey and I'll see you in the next one.